it's finally time for us to break down our all-time Blue Jays Mount Rushmore. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And of course, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Okay, weird thing happens yesterday, right? Um, so Monday or Sunday night, we have a have the late game for our beer hockey league. Yeah, we were uh, we were feeling not the greatest yesterday because uh, for some reason our manager or the commissioner of our beer league hockey league uh, decided to put our game at nine thirty when we live in the city, and it hasn't been the first time that he's done this. It's uh, it's like five weeks in a row. Yeah, and we're kind of getting sick of it. Like, don't get me wrong, I love hockey, but like, I want to be kind of I want to be in my bed at like ten thirty, honestly. Like, I don't really want to be playing hockey, just grinding out a gritty shift that late in the night when I got a busy schedule the next day. And and so we we get on the podcast and we're thinking, oh man, you know, we were pretty exhausted that you know that that podcast. We look at the stats today, and you guys absolutely killed it with views. And uh, I, I think it ended up like being like I listened back to it. And I'm like, wow, was, you know, this wasn't not what wasn't a bad episode. No, it turned out pretty well, considering that on top of our weekend as well with our bad sleep from hockey. Uh, didn't didn't feel the greatest on Sunday when we were recording that, and obviously didn't get a good sleep Sunday night either. So Monday's podcast was interesting for us. Yeah, but we have we have some stories actually from that Saturday night. Yeah, okay, quick quick thing, and and I, you know what? There's not too many episodes where I feel like I have to get on and say something. Okay, um, but Saturday night, you know, we, we had a buddy come back out from uh, he lives a couple hours away, and he was finally coming back to the city. So we're like, hey, let's get you down. Uh, we watched the uh, All Star competition for NHL or whatever. Yeah, he lost some money there. Lost, unfortunately. lost some money. Yeah, he already went over that. Um, I fill it in there. Yeah, great, thanks. Um, and so it's it's whatever time we we've been sort of just hanging out all day. And Carter decides to make wings. Yeah, no, I made a power move, and I'm like, the boys are hungry. Come on, I'm gonna be a nice guy. I'm gonna make the boys some wings. So I just dumped my entire Costco wing bag in the oven. I'm just like, oh, like somebody said they're hungry. Come on, I'm gonna be a nice guy. Whatever. So I threw him in. I don't even know how long it was. I did have a couple beverages, so I, that might have impacted it a little bit. But how long do you think it was in there for? How long did I have it? It, it was Half in, an hour to forty-five minutes. No, it was in there that? for an hour. You put it in oh, for okay. you put it in for twenty-five minutes, fifteen minutes, and another fifteen minutes. These wings were they weren't like crisp, but they were like literally stuck to the bone of the pen, falling off the bone. <laughs> and I I was gonna make wings today. Cause I'm like, you know what? I, I got back from work. I was like, I'm a, you know, a little, a little tired. I, I had to wait for him to get back from school to record. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make some wings. And I, I pulled the wing bag out and I'm like, I can't even look at wings. Yeah, right I, was, I was getting so much flack for this over the weekend. And I, I got some PTSD actually from making wings, believe it or not. So I had this one buddy one time, same thing. We had a few beverages, probably weren't in the greatest mindset, but he decided to throw in his wings for 10 minutes. And these wings were like soggy, obviously undercooked. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? These are disgusting. He's like, no, I like my wings like this. I'm like, that is insane. So I watched this guy eat like pretty much 15 frozen wings at this point. They're not even like unthawed. And he's like, these wings are kind of gross. I'm like, well, who would have thought? Yeah. So I have some wing PTSD. I didn't want to make the boys soggy wings. So and part of the reason was I, I found the one wing in there that was just like the biggest wing. It shouldn't it, even have been in it, the, it was the It was the most ginormous wing i've ever seen in my life and i'm like this one is not cooked i'm not doing it again and then obviously the boys uh were like dude like literally 60 of the other wings are fine yeah they're, they're actually they're baked onto the the bottom of the pan they're fine yeah so we had an interesting morning so, after that but... yeah the, the the moral of this story is <laughs> so i was getting apparently i'm the bad guy for making my friend's wings that's the moral of the story well no you the, the problem is is that we already ordered mcdonald's and then there was like you and one other guy you're like yeah I'll make wings for the boys. And by the boys, you mean yourself yeah. and one other guy, an entire bag, like Costco sized bag of wings. Oh, there's a, at least 60 wings. In this, probably more, probably closer to 80, to be honest. Yeah. But so, hey, so, good so, guy moved by me. So the moral of the story is it's been a week. And, and we had, we had a buddy the, the same night sleepover ended up having like night terrors at 20 years old, which apparently is a thing. 
yeah, that scared was the crap out of us. Yeah. Woke you up at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. Like, uh, great, crazy weekend from us. But, uh, yeah, we're feeling way better today. That's oh. kind of the, the point of that backstory. Time to get some sleep. A lot more energized, a lot uh, well-rested. And, yeah, I guess uh, that will take us in. We'll actually get on to some Blue Jays baseball here. <laughs> Sorry about that uh, little backstory there. But, yeah, we got our top four, I guess. We have top five. We did an honorable mention. But, yeah, top four, Mount Rushmore for uh, the Blue Jays all-time. Obviously, the Blue Jays founded in 1976. So we have a few years of players to discuss here. Yeah, so we pretty much decided, like, hey, we don't want to have, like, the same guys. So we, like, we sort of made sure, you know, we, we didn't pick the same. So if you see some, like, a little bit, maybe guys that wouldn't be on yours, it's most likely because the other guy had them. Yeah, and there's another thing. I was born in 2002. And 2000 for me. So we didn't get to witness a lot of these guys play. So I, I did, we did do some research just to kind of like uh, give the older guys some props. Well, and it's from uh, the 80s, 90s. Yeah. And, and of course, like we know, like, you know, like e even for me, like when I go on to uh, like play MLB the show or something, right? Like yeah. I'm seeing all these guys. And and so, you know, I've, I've gone over like my, my whatever, 20 three four years of living of, of you know going to watch some of these clips or, or hear people talk about these stories and and my parents and my papa to always talk about um these older blue jays that they loved uh uh david Eckstein always came up as uh, like my, he was one of my papa's favorites and whatever so a lot of those old sort of little little things you sort of just pick up as you go along um but i guess i'll i don't know do you want to start i'll let you go I'll, first okay I'll, I'll take it yeah I'll, I'll gladly take that um this is in no particular order for me. I just uh, decided to do four players. Obviously, Braden did take four players that like I was thinking about picking. Obviously, it's a it's a tough list to make because there's so many good Blue Jays players. One guy I could not leave off this list is Carlos Delgado. Yeah. So that is my number one. Played for the Blue Jays from 1993 to 2004. Uh, first baseman. I think he has one of the smoothest swings I have ever seen. This guy's swing is amazing. If uh, the Blue Jays should be watching tape on this guy, I, mean, I know Pete Walker's doing a great job. Oh, sorry, that's pitching. Uh, Louis Rivera not doing as nearly as good of a job um, <laughs> on that side of the baseball, but uh, he's not going to be coming back. So they should be uh, in the film room watching some tape on Delgado. Uh, for being in an era where there was a lot of people on steroids, this guy had a lot of very impressive offensive stats. Uh, one game that uh, came up to me right away was his four home run game against the Rays in 2003. Uh, he was one of six American leaguers to ever do it. Uh, and for a time when the Blue Jays weren't great, it was a kind of guy that like made you turn on the TV to watch their baseball games. Obviously, 92-93 uh, were those World Series teams. And after that, kind of a big drop-off. Um, another stat from him, he logged more than 100 RBI in six straight seasons. We can get a guy like that in this Blue Jays lineup today. Oh, this offense would look great. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Just a, just a huge name. I think like like anybody that you go and talk to about the Blue Jays, it's one of those guys. I mean, I think there's him and three other guys. If you said like, hey, you know, name me your all-time favorite Blue Jay. I think there's a – there is a fourth, but, you know, now he's a little bit shunned from the Blue Jays for good reason, but uh, that's Roberto Alomar. Uh, but uh, – uh, my guy actually that I picked um, you talked about those world series and that's Joe Carter. Yeah. I can't leave him off of my Mount Rushmore blue Jays list. Probably the best uh, blue Jays like highlight of all time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, that, that home run was just insane. He played seven years with the blue Jays. His war was 19.5, 396 uh, home runs over his career, uh, 1,445 RBI, 231, uh, stolen bases, uh, batting average of 256, slugging percentage of 464, and that's over his entire career. It's not just strictly based on his his Blue Jays seasons. So, like, I mean, this this guy is just unbelievable, and I think he lives in the head of every Blue Jays fan when you think of all time Blue Jays. He might, honestly, for a lot of people, he might be number one. Oh, and I just I've seen that clip so many times. Just that touch them all, Joe. You're never gonna hit a bigger home run in your life. Yeah, and yeah. You were that was completely right. I mean. Every little kid dreams of that moment, right? Hitting in, a walk in, in, your in your backyard, right? Oh, exactly. With your buddies, same but thing. Eight years old, hitting a bomb off of Braden every single time. You know, pretty much like I'm batting a thousand, obviously, playing against him. Not a great pitcher, but uh, yeah, like that's a moment that must have been just so, so cool to experience. Imagine being in that building. You know what? That's the, that's what kills me as a Blue Jays fan a little bit is that like so far there hasn't been a big moment like that 
besides one other guy that we'll get into eventually. No, I'm going to bring it up right You're now. Go now. Actually, okay. yeah, we're going right into it. It's probably the second biggest moment of Blue Jays history, and that is Jose Bautista bat flip. But we'll I'll just cover uh, some basics about Jose Bautista. Obviously, one of the most clutch hitters in the Blue Jays era. Uh, he was actually traded to the Jays in 2008. So didn't start his big league uh, career with the Blue Jays. Obviously struggled a little bit before uh, his tenure with the Blue Jays. Wasn't really like known too well. Uh, struggled offensively. And then he got traded and it was like a beast was awoken. Uh, he was a three-time silver slugger. Led the major leagues in home runs in 2010 and 2011. Uh, I believe one of those years was 48 home runs. And then I think he had 54. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that one. But uh yeah, I mean, most home runs in the MLB between 2010 and 2011, like I said. Uh, Ring of Honor got inducted into that last year. Uh, career hitter of only about 250, but Bautista was there to hit home runs, hit doubles, drive runners in, and come with these clutch situations. So going into that 2015 ALDS, obviously one of the most popular innings in baseball history. Uh, I'd like to say a personal thank you to Elvis Andrews. The absolute collapse might be talking to a Blue Jays fan in, you know, in our age that um, like, I remember I, I was at home that day and just sitting on my couch. And I remember it was me and my mom. Um, and I think like we, we just, and my, and my brother might've been there, but it was for sure me and my mom, because I remember the look on my mom's face when that, when uh, that home run was hit. And just the, like, it was, it was one of those things where it was goosebumps. And it, like, I felt like my body shake. Like I was that like glued to the TV. I couldn't even take my eyes off the screen. I was, I was standing, like, I didn't even know where I was. For me, that moment really uh, compared to like the 2010 Crosby golden goal. It's just one yeah. of those things chills throughout your body. Uh, being again, being, imagine being at the Rogers center there. You could like hear the building, you could hear it. The building shaking through the TV. Yeah, it was crazy. And what's nuts is, is like, so uh, when you when you do NHL games in in um, in Canada Life Center, uh, we're here in Winnipeg. You sometimes can hear when you know during the whiteouts and stuff like that. You can hear the uh, the crowd in like your headset, right? Where almost to the point where I have to take my headset off because it's so loud in your ears. And I could not imagine being in a outdoor you know maybe with the, whatever the dome or whatever but still in that huge facility and still being able to hear that ra- like the tv used to like was rattling that's how crazy it was oh and just the swagger he had on that bat flip too oh, just an iconic moment in blue jays history and yeah like you said for guys our age i mean that's easily my favorite blue jays memory of all time it's not up for debate uh just an unbelievable player for the blue jays and very well deserving being inducted into the ring of honor yeah, and I mean, I don't know. And then to go get, um, I, I think it was the next season he got rocked by Odor, right? At second no, base? No, I think, was it, was it the 2015? I think it was the 2015 season. It was still, yeah, okay. No. I, I always get 2015, 2016. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was the following season that, uh, that Odor punched him. Um, but another hilarious moment. I, I remember I, I made a tweet about that, and I said, um, Zero respect for Rogue Neto Door. Never had any to begin with. Oh, and that guy's been like banished to. I think it's like a league in Japan or something. Good. Now. Send like, that guy I don't to even Mars. know uh, where he is now. But I'll uh, give it back to you for your uh, second one. Yeah, and I mean this one: Hall of Famer, two-time Cy Young, eight-time All Star, Roy Halladay. You know, just just a brutal story. Yeah, um, rest in peace to uh, Roy Halladay. Uh, Bless him and his family, obviously. Yeah, I mean, as a kid looking up to. You know, uh, like I was a pitcher and, uh, you know, not very good. like I said before, but, come on, you know, come on, give me a break. Um, <laughs> but, get, but looking up to a guy, I mean, just watching like clips of, of him and, and, you know, some, some games and stuff going back and watching, um, he was something else. Like when he walked on the mound, it was, you know, you knew it was going like, it, it was watching history a little bit. Right. Um, and I mean, actually, I was I was lucky enough to get. Um, I, so he played twelve seasons with the Blue Jays, but he was from one of the All Star games uh, that he represented Philly. Um, my buddy actually had a uh, a Roy Halladay All Star game jersey, and um, yeah, I've I'll, seen I've seen that a time or two. Yeah, I've worn that one or two times. Shown that off. 
thrown in my face a little bit. That's all right. It yeah. is a beautiful jersey, and, so I mean. Yeah, and he's, uh, you know, uh, uh, my buddy, you know, not a huge baseball fan. Uh, he knew I uh, I loved it, and he was going to sell it. And uh, so he texted me right away, and he's like, hey, Roy Halladay jersey. I didn't even think he knew how, like, important that was. But no, like, you probably got a pretty good deal on that jersey. I got a fairly right? good deal. But, um, yeah, I you know, it, it's one of those things that um, – I, I try to keep very good care of is what I'll say because it's it's so iconic and just an iconic player. He had a war of 64-2, an ERA of 3.38 over his entire career, 236 home runs given up, 2,117 strikeouts, 2,749 innings pitched. Just an absolute beast. And I don't know if there will ever be a pitcher with – as much um i don't even want to say fame almost um i, I want to say almost like immortality like a yeah. guy that will live on forever um through this team and through the, and through the entire mlb like he's just that much that that well respected in my opinion i think roy halliday is the face of the blue jays like did so much for that franchise uh 2003 al cy young winner uh led the league in innings twice uh, in his tenure with the blue jays just an all-around great guy. Just a killer mentality on the mound. He was going up there to do business, and he was not taking no for an answer, and he was not going out without a fight. Without a fight. So a great guy, um, obviously, to have on your Mount Rushmore. Yeah, Doc is something, somebody that is just a legend. And um, I, I do, I do want to mention that he did end up winning a World Series with that with the Phillies. Um, and so that, you know, I think that puts like the stamp on his career of being, you know, he deserved it. He's, uh, there's some guys that come into the league and don't end up winning a World Series. And you think, wow, they deserve that. Like, I think back to R Roberto Luongo and the Sedins. Like, I think, wow, if there's one guy that deserved to win a Stanley Cup, it was Roberto Luongo. Right? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and I'm so, so glad that uh, that uh, Doc got it. Um but we do want to sort of get into our next couple, but we, we figured that these were going to take a little bit longer, you know, sort of reminiscing. So uh, we'll hit it uh, coming right up. Well, I told you that I lost some money on the All-Star game. I, uh, but the Super Bowl is coming up this weekend. I could not be more uh, ecstatic. Um, and I'm going to celebrate using FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the, the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season on a W or two or three, or I'm hoping a thousand, hundred million. Um, not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. Uh, I'm going to utilize the parlay as big time. I'm thinking I'm going to roll maybe two or three of them for sure, maybe more. It's going to be disgusting. Yeah, you got to come up with those for the fans. Uh, one of these next two episodes. I will. I, I think Friday's episode will kick off with my Super Bowl uh, uh, bets. I love it. Uh, new customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if you're the first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Okay, we're going to jump right back into it here with uh, the last two players on each of our Mount Rushmores. And I got a guy that uh, I had to pay some homage to, uh, one of the, probably the first uh, superstars on the Blue Jays, and that is Dave Steeb. Uh, played for the Blue Jays from 1979 to 1992, and then also came back in 98. Uh, yeah, the Jays were founded in 76, like I said. Uh, the first season was the following year. Dave, uh, he joined the team two years later, and he was considered one of the best pitchers in the AL during the years of 1982 to 1985. You could probably make an argument that he was one of the best pitchers in the league uh, past those uh, those time frames. But if you uh, fastball, curveball, and slider, like obviously I wasn't alive to uh, to see this guy play live, but his curve, his uh, slider, it almost reminded me of Jose Barrios with that it's got a very tight break. Um, just the swings the hitters were uh, were making on these pitches. It just, just gave me Jose Brios vibes, and that's uh, a great guy for Brios to be uh, compared to. Maybe a little bit of a bold comparison so far, but you never know, right? Eventually. Hey, and the thing with uh, Dave Steve was I found, like, just from the, the couple videos I watched, uh, it looked like he almost had a little bit of a tell on his slider. It came from, like, more of a sidearm slot, but it didn't matter because it was just disgusting. 
And some of these, uh, like I said, the swings were just hilarious to watch. It looked like uh, an LB when they always say, oh, he's swinging a garden hose out there. That was kind of swing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the basic MLB The Show uh, uh, voiceover. Swinging a garden hose out there. I believe that was from uh, like 20, or sorry, 17, if I had to guess. Uh, oh, it's still in there. Oh, oh, they, oh yeah, they, they just keep it going. Well, I, I came away a little bit from uh, the MLB uh, games, unfortunately. I find them pretty similar every year, so uh, – Anyway, uh, yeah, his best season was probably in 1982. Uh, or actually, 1985 was pretty good, too. I'll just run over the stats real quick. Uh, 82 was at 325 ERA, 141 strikeouts, and a 1.2 whip. Obviously, uh, fan graphs and all these great uh, sites weren't out during this time, so the stats are a little bit limited. But uh, in 85, uh, he had a 248 ERA, which led the league. So I think right there, I probably answered my own question. I think 85 would have been his best season, uh, 167 strikeouts. And uh, that year, just a phenomenal year. And the stat that I just found hilarious, because it's never going to get broken. Obviously, pitching has changed a lot over the years. 103 complete games. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Dave Steve has an arm like Iron Man. I don't know, the Hulk. Like, what if, like if that thing is, like, long, the longevity he has. If Imagine if, like, Kevin Gossman had to throw 103 complete games in a year. He would have had probably eight Tommy John surgeries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy's arm would have been falling off his body. So some of the, the things these guys played through is just absolutely insane. Also, uh, the Blue Jays franchise leader in wins, strikeouts, complete games, innings, shutouts, pretty much anything you can think of for Dave Steve. So an unbelievable player. And, uh, yeah, just it's crazy how you had great pitching men. You talked about Doc before, and now we got Kevin Gosman. It's the history of uh, some good aces on this team. Yeah, yeah. Um... The next guy I sort of want to get into is um, uh, John Olrud, two-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ, three-time Gold Glove. This guy is awesome. And when uh, when I play MLB The Show every year, it's like one of the cards I look out for because I love his swing. I love the way, um, uh, you know, some guys' stances um, just give off that. It's almost like you can see – see the consistency and how they swing. It's it's such a different look from players nowadays. Just the stance, the the swing, everything. Uh, so he's it, it's really interesting. A war of 58-2, 255 home runs, 1,230 RBI, a batting average of 295, which is insane for over an entire career. He played eight years with the Blue Jays and a slugging percentage of 465. So just insane numbers. Um, and I think it's a guy that sort of like gets overlooked when you t- do these Mount Rushmore. So I sort of like the, the fact that we did where we couldn't have the, the same guys because it, it, it let me go and like, look at, you know, some of these guys, um, and for, and for my final yeah. guy too. So oh, it allowed us to give uh, some flowers to guys that you don't really commonly hear about. Right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, with my last one, I had to bring in a little bit of my, uh, just like bias, I guess you could say. Just a guy that I actually was able to watch, and it is Edwin Encarnacion, uh, another guy that was acquired in a trade, didn't start as a Blue Jay, and he was a, a part of a three-man trade, three guys getting sent over for Scott Rowland. He was pretty much just a throw-in in this trade, so uh, great value, obviously, for the Blue Jays. Uh, Jays all-time list for Edwin, he had 239 home runs, which is third all-time. RBIs, he was six with 679. And OPS, he was actually tied for fourth all time for the Blue Jays with a guy we talked about before, Jose Bautista. Obviously, shared a lot of good uh, playoff memories in uh, 2015 and 2016. And that 2016 season, I think we all remember that walk off against the Baltimore Orioles. Another top Jays moment for me. Another building shaker. Just an insane swing and Pops. just absolutely hammers the ball in the left field. Pops out the Ed Wing, too. The Ed oh Wing. My God. Oh, you gotta love that, man. The the parrot porch <laughs> going, going around the bases. Oh, just a classic. Yeah, he he's, again, one of those guys that, like, when we think of the Blue Jays, those are the guys we think of, right? Um, and, and you know what? I didn't go with uh, another guy from that era. I, so this isn't one of my picks, but um, if, if we were doing like, you know, our just overall Mount Rushmore, which I, we might do eventually, um, just for players that we know that, that for the Blue Jays, but um, Josh Donaldson, another guy, right? And again, my favorite player all time. He's my by far above and beyond. Um, same thing. It's, it's when we think back over, you know, watching the Blue Jays, it's going to be those three guys that, that we look back on and be like, wow, like what an era. 
Oh yeah, obviously a little bit of a short tenure with the Blue Jays, but what a 2015 season he had. Yeah, one of the best hitters in baseball. Obviously a great fielder, just making great plays on both ends of the ball. And with Josh Donaldson, you always get that fierce competitive attitude. So that's a kind of a guy that imagine if we had him on the Blue Jays now. I don't think Vladdy's going to be messed around too much in that uh, dugout over there. Jeez, Donaldson would rip guys' arms off probably. Oh, um, it, it would be insane to have that guy. Uh, Hopefully, I mean, it would have been nicer if he was in his prime uh, coming back. Yeah. But, I mean, more of just uh, probably a leadership role if he was ever going to come back to the Jays. For sure. Um, but as my final pick, I, I I couldn't – you know what? I was I was going over a bunch of guys. Of, oh, who should I pick? And and I kept coming back to him, and that's Tom Hankey. And it, it's he, he played with the Jays for eight years, two-time All-Star. He won a World Series, 22.9 uh, war over his career, 2.67 ERA. Uh, it, he pitched uh, 789.2 innings, 64 home runs given up, 861 strikeouts. Now, this when, when I was looking at the stats, um, there, there was one thing that jumped off the page to me, 64 home runs. So I'm thinking, okay, how many home runs given up per nine innings? 0.7 per nine innings. Yeah, is that good? I don't know. I might be yeah, okay. Probably. It might be okay. Yeah, yeah. No, in insane. It was like I, I was sort of just like it was one of those things where I was doing the math in my head, and then I'm like, what? <laughs> like I you know, almost had to do a double take. I had yeah, to. I had to not, not a math guy, right? No, no, not a big math guy. No, no. You, when you're in media, you know, when you go for broadcasting, yeah, there, there's they, a reason we're here, right? Yeah, they, they don't uh, they don't test your math skills. I'll tell you that. Thank so, God. Um, and then his strikeouts per nine innings again, nine point eight, just uh, just electric. Like honestly. Maybe we'll get into this, but like guys, yeah, I don't know. There's, we've had good relievers over the years, um, and who knows? Maybe we'll have a couple more that we could maybe eventually throw in this conversation. Um, but I did. We, we, I think we both did pick an honorable mention as well. Uh, there, you know, a little bit more fun, a little bit all over the map. So I'm, I'm going to give it to you first of all. Oh, and this was a very easy decision for me. A guy that made such a difference in that 2022 season, and I have Bradley Zimmer. Wow. Uh, just an absolute beauty for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, July 2nd, absolutely just launches a ball into right field when we're down 11-3 of the race, you know? Really made a, a big difference there. Uh, obviously, he's coming in defensively, making some good plays. Just quick. Who else is going to do that, right? Like, nobody could do what Bradley's Just a did. role player. Hey, he's, he set records on the Blue Jays. And in the MLB, he set records. He, he set records. You can't take that away from him. He did set records. Well, that's who, who I honorable mention was, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Toronto you know what? That's a hilarious pick. And you know what? We we do dog him a little bit, but he, you know what? Like, he seemed like a nice enough guy. Like, I saw some media stuff with him. He seemed like a good dude. Yeah, you know, quick. He was there. He did what he, he did. What, well, not maybe what was asked, but he, he did. Yeah, he had a role on the Blue he Jays. He did. Yeah, he did. No, I actually love Bradley Zimmer. We do poke fun of him and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, just great guy. Obviously not a great offensive season, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Better than uh, I would have did. Okay, so I liked where you went. I went a little bit of a different direction, and I picked Buck Martinez. Oh, I love it, too. Um, I love it. If, if it's from, you know, him calling the Batista home run, or if, or if it's uh, from him mispronouncing every possible name that could ever exist ever. Yeah, I just loved when he used to say – he used to combine Tay Oscar Hernandez's name and just say Oscar Hernandez. Oscar Hernandez. Yeah, it's just one name. What? What is this guy talking about? <laughs> and then Kevin Biggio, he gave a shout out to uh, last uh, season as well. He's, apparently, he was having a lot of sex. So yeah. congrats to uh, Kevin Biggio on yeah. the sex. Good for him. Yeah, we we applaud him. Uh, so Buck Martinez uh, uh, was named actually manager of the Blue Jays uh, for part of the two thousand or uh, part of the two thousand one and two thousand two seasons. Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, and he played for the Blue Jays actually in 1981 to 1986. And I mean, I, I think it speaks for him, for himself. He's been he's been a big part of this team. And, and growing up listening to Buck, um, he he was always just a staple, right? Like I know when he was diagnosed um, with uh, with cancer, it was it, it sort of gave me a little bit of a, like a shock. I'm like, oh man, you know, like, that's a guy that I just when I think of the Toronto Blue Jays, I think of Buck Martinez and, um, you know, me, myself going into broadcasting, it was sort of one of those like, Oh, just, uh, heavy heart moments. Um, and as much as, as ridiculous as Buck is sometimes, um, you know, I don't think it would be the same without him. No, he's, he's really done it all. Obviously he said he played for the Jays, managed coach. Yeah. He did, did everything. And now obviously he's broadcasting. 
some people don't like what he's doing anymore. They think he's kind of past his prime, but I don't have a problem with Buck. I like, I like his kind of perspective on the Jays and, uh, and with Dan Schmolman is uh, quite yep. the in- interesting pair they have to broadcast. <laughs> yep, it uh, it might be one of the most interesting in baseball, actually. But uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll do something on that one day as well. Uh, yeah, but all, we, all time commentators for the Blue Jays. Yeah, but uh, you know what? We we're gonna take one quick break, and then we're gonna just tell you guys who who we think co- possibly from this Blue Jays team could eventually maybe touch this Mount Rushmore. Yeah, just before we uh, jump into the break, there, I just want to let you guys know that uh, Locked On does have its 24 seven streaming channel. Obviously the NHL is back. Braden's really hyped up for the Super Bowl. NBA is still going on. Great time to be a sports fan, honestly. So go over to the Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to their first ever 24 seven streaming channel. Okay, so I, I think we probably have a consensus here. At least I would say for the first two, for sure, probably three. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you name two. And then if, if I have different two other, two different guys, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. Okay. So obviously right now you think Toronto blue Jays, if you had to do a current Mount, Mount Rushmore, Jesus, tongue twister for some reason. All right. I would have, uh, obviously Vladdy. Mm-hmm. Vladdy is the, probably the face of the blue Jays right now. And then you got to obviously have Boba Shep as well. Is that even up? For yeah, a bit? no, no, not even close. So those are the two guys. So I think for them, yeah, obviously great players, uh, lots of potential, not hopefully uh, getting into their primes. We need some, uh, some boost in offense uh, coming down the stretch. So yeah, those ones are pretty obvious. I have, uh, I find, and I have Kevin Gosman as the third one. I also have Kevin Gosman as my third one. Okay, that yeah. So I think that's kind of a consensus. I feel like a lot of Blue Jays fans would have the same take on that. Obviously, Kevin Gosman, he's in Cy Young conversations every single year. Yeah, Uh, I think I think for like people again, like watching now, like when I look back, um, you know, over over the time, I think as a pitcher, maybe Kevin Gosman might be one of my one of the most that like stand out to me. I think like right now, the pitching staff that we have is so hard not to like. Oh, we still have three more years of this guy. Yeah, it's un- unbelievable. Yeah, we're uh, we're pretty lucky as Blue Jays fans with this pitching staff. I think we take it for granted a lot of the time where uh, we have four really solid relievers and then one of the best bullpens in baseball. So just obviously have to give our flowers to Kevin Gosman. Talking about the bullpen, my number four is Jordy Romano. I don't mind that. I had him on my list, but that's not who I ended up going with. Oh, so wow. I'm let you oh, break that okay. down a little bit. Yeah, I just think um, Jordy's a staple, right? When you think of the ninth inning, you think, uh, you know, you, you see, you, you're probably going to see those lights go down. You're going to see, you know, the, the red lights pop up and Jordy's going to be making his way down. And I think he's a guy that is just very steady. We, we know what we're going to get. He's going to, he's going to put runners, runners on two bases and then he's going to strike out the yeah. side. He's going to give you a heart attack every single start, but I mean, he leads the league in saves or at least up in the conversation every year for a reason, right? Yeah. He is electric. And I don't know if it's just a me thing. Um, but I think I think this team would look very different and have a much harder time if you didn't have a guy like Jordy Romano that would come out and and do exactly what you need to do every time. And like I, I don't honestly like watching games. There's not too many games where I could say like, oh, Jordy blew that. You know, maybe one, two a year. Well, that's the thing. Like obviously you're gonna have some tough outings and you're not gonna be perfect every single start. But Jordy gets pretty close to that. Obviously, yeah. uh, I would say top five closer in the game of baseball for sure. And, and I, I think he does get the respect that he sometimes deserve when talking about closers, right? Um, but yeah, I think I think undoubtedly he's going to be in the top five conversation. Well, and I feel like yeah, if you, I haven't looked into this, the advanced stats, just considering how often he does put runners on before he uh, decides to get some outs, that it might not look great for him in that aspect. But when this guy gets into his zone, he is disgusting. Like mm-hmm. he is. It's so funny because you just, yeah, like you said, two guys get on and then strike out, strike out, strike out. Yep. And you can almost predict it every single time. It's I, usually fastball, <laughs> slider, and then either goes to the high fastball again yep. Yep. or he throws a slider outside and it yep. works every single time. That, that high fastball. There, there was games where you where we were, we were sitting on the couch together watching and, and we both went high fastball, high fastball, bang, strike out. Or, or, or you could tell sometimes you go like, oh, this might be a slider this time. Yep, it's a slider. It's like you knew exactly what was coming and it didn't matter. If only you bet on the next pitch more often, hey, for maybe, Jordy. You maybe. Might, might be able to make a little bit of money maybe. off of that. We'll see if I can do FanDuel and maybe, you know, try to lock that one in. Yeah, well, the guy I ended up going with, I mean, back in the day, like you might have had Kevin Biggio in this conversation just because I was always advertised as the big three, the big three with Greg Biggio and all that. Uh, had a better second half, but I didn't think it was good enough to put him on this list. I had to go with George Springer. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I I think he's a guy again that's that's so electric and such a face for this team. Um, 
yeah, if I was debating him or Jordy, it'd be close. But I, I think personally, I'd go Jordy. But I mean, hey, that's that's why we do this, right? Have some debates. Let us know what you guys honestly think too. Um, who's in your, you know, Mount Rushmore current? Who's your Mount Rushmore all time? I mean, obviously, it's going to look very different than ours because we, you know, split up some guys. But um, anyway, wh- why do you think Jordy? Or why do you think uh, George? Well, George Springer was just one of those guys, along with Hanjin Ryu, who really started the kind of movement uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. Obviously, not a lot of success uh, after those 2015-2016 seasons. Kind of tough to watch some baseball for a while. Then those two guys come over, and then they make Toronto a lot more of an attractive destination for some of these uh these bigger names like Kevin Gosman, Jose Barrios. It's tough to say that these guys would have came over if uh, George Springer didn't start that movement. Obviously, a little bit of a down year, but just watching this guy play baseball is so fun. He just puts his heart on the line every single time. Yeah. Probably puts his body on the line a little <laughs> bit too often yeah. for my liking. Yeah. Maybe you could... Uh... Bo-, Bo Bichette tries to run through him and he's just like, all right. Yeah, it's, oh, well, I just hate talking about that moment. Oh, God, let's not even bring that up. But yeah, uh, George Springer for me was... Uh, he just got it over Jordy. I mean... Face the franchise, one of those guys, right? Yeah, and I love it. Um, also, we want to let you guys know to go follow us on uh, Twitter, Braden Five Bosco Carter First Two. Um, also, please hit that sub subscribe button. Like we notice, like seventy some percent of you guys like aren't subscribed, and it really helps us out. We're trying to reach that thousand, and we're getting pretty close. Like every day, it, it's been helping us out. So we re- do, really do appreciate it. Uh, all you guys tuning in. Um, the episodes are going to just keep getting better. We're, we're you know. I think as we go along, we've, we're coming up with more ideas. And then when the season gets going, it's going to be just electric. We're getting closer and closer. It's February 6th, as the day we're recording this. This comes out February 7th. couple more weeks. couple more weeks. We're excited. I hope you guys are too. Obviously, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out all of our social medias. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.